Hello everybody, my name is uh, Vitaly Neymer, I'm the Grandmaster Resident at the St. Louis Chess Club and welcome to our weekly session of uh, games you should know by heart. Uh, so welcome. Today we are, we are actually having an exciting topic and we are going to be looking at uh, games with the most beautiful uh, last moves. So we're just going to look at the last move. <laughs> well, we're going to also look at how the players got to that last move, but the last move is going to be um, you know, the, the, the cherry. Uh, okay, so let's look at our first game today. Um, the first game uh, was played a long time ago in the 1800s. It um, was played by Alexander... McDonald versus uh, Louis uh, Charles Labodona. Yes. Um, now the the uh, the game got a nickname. the The nickname of the game is Labodone Picnic. <laughs> okay, and you will you will see why. So we are not going to um, we are not going to um, stop too much at the middle game, but. Um, we're going to look mostly at the last move. e4, c5, knight f3, knight c6, d4, where in the Sicilian defense, pawn takes, pawn takes, and e5. So we got the Sveshnikov, right? Um, Usually white plays knight to b6, trying to exploit the d6 weakness. But in this case, white took on uh, c6. Um, and I think this position is already equal. Um, bishop c4. Knight f6. Bishop c g5. Bishop e7, Queen e2, defending the e4 pawn, and now pawn to d5, starting to advance the pawns. Bishop took on f6, Bishop takes on f6. the bishop went to b3. So, so far, uh, white got a slightly, uh, black got a slightly uh, better position. Um, two bishops, a center, uh, but not so easy to win. So, let's see what happened. Castle, castle, and a5, great move. Uh, both, uh, Amy get playing a4, and bishop a6. E takes d5, c takes d5, and now white play rook to d1. Very good, good, um, good answer, good answer to the threats, both of them, because a4 loses to bishop d5, and now um, bishop a6 is not uh, so effective anymore. So black played d4. Very strong, very strong pawns in the center. Not hanging, not so much because they're being supported. Now uh, here, White played c4. That's a move that I don't like so much. Uh, blocking, blocking the bishop. Uh, maybe, maybe White should start playing on white squares like knight, knight to d2, knight to e4, knight to c4, and so on. So c4 really allows Black to create those really strong pass pawns. So let's see what happened. Queen to b6, getting the queen away from the d-file, excellent move. Bishop c2. Um, I hope everybody can see the threat. But black just played bishop to b7. 
neutralizing it. Knight to d2, okay, so now the knight is coming to e4 for the blockade, right? Because we learned that the knight is the best blockading piece. Now, how do we fight against this blockade? Rook a to e8 first, because otherwise he will, play, he will take the pawn. Rook a to e8, knight to e4, and now bishop d8. Okay, that makes more sense. Exactly. So the idea is to push f5 and take the knight out of e4. Really, white cannot prevent this. So he played c5, attacking the queen. But that made the queen even more powerful. Okay, very uh, nice diagonal battery with a bishop and the queen. F3, bishop e7, rook ac1, f5, queen c4 check, king h8, bishop a4, Queen h6. And now we start with the tactics. Bishop takes e8. F takes e4. C6. It's pretty much it's pretty much like everybody's ignoring everybody else's <laughs> threat. <laughs> so like you're taking my my rook? Oh, that's okay, I'm just gonna take you. No, I'm not gonna take him, I'm just gonna play c6. Are you threatening my bishop? There is no way I'm moving it. I'm just continuing with my plan. <laughs> e takes f3. I'm, do I do you threaten me? Do I take here? Take here? No. Just rook c2. Um, queen e3 check. King h1. Bishop c8, so he cannot take enough three because he is losing the, the rook on d1. Bishop d7. f2. Rook f1, d3, and now the pawns are marching, the, mar the march of the pawns. Rook c3, bishop takes d7, pawn takes e4. Well, what do we have here? Let's see, How do we, let's count the, the pawns. So it looks like black has a bishop and a pawn versus the rook. Technically, value-wise, white is supposed to be better. But those pawns are much, much pushed forward. This is only one pawn, and he's, he got stopped very easily. Now white tried. He played queen c8, so the idea is to take the rook and promote. But now black just played bishop to d8. That's it. No picnic for white. But, so white moved back, but black is the one who is doing the party now. Queen to e1, rook c1, and now d2. If he takes, we take twice, mate. So he has to move his uh, rook. I'm sorry, he, he played queen to c5, his last chance. Maybe he's going to take the rook and we're going to checkmate him in one move. But in this case, black just played rook to g8. So look how, actually, looks like a queen and two pawns are stronger than queen and two rooks. <laughs> um, rook to d1. e3. A beautiful position. Queen to c3. B 
and now queen takes on d1 rook takes on d1 and e2 our last move e2 so if somebody asks you what's the value of the of the if uh, is the queen better than the pawn three pawns if somebody asks you you have to say well it depends <laughs> depends on the position because here the just three pawns are better than a rook and a queen so three versus uh what 12 no more even 13 no 14. now this one is uh, levitsky versus marshall and again we are going to be playing marshall and the nickname for this game is the shower of gold uh, so if you know so the story says um so it's not it's not clearly if if uh, the legend is if the winning of the queen triggered the shower of gold coins is true but a marshal said that the spectators threw gold pieces uh, coins on the board uh, because the move that he made his last move was so brilliant um, now uh, Although one reporter says that actually his wife stated that it was Caroline, that it wasn't the showers of gold, but uh, just a shower of pennies. <laughs> <laughs> Good wife. <laughs> uh, and another guy says that uh, the people were just paying off their wagers. <laughs> so let's see what happened. Why is this uh, last move uh, triggered? Uh, those uh, coins. I wish, I wish I wish I would be throwing some some coins in my games. Why not? Okay, so d4, e6, and e4, d5. We transpose to the French defense. Knight to c3. Here the black has lots of options, taking a pawn, a knight of six, bishop b4. But Marshall chose this variation, c5, which is also an option. Although, I don't think that this is uh, one of the main lines because here white can uh, just take and create a, um, an isolated pawn. So white played knight of 3 knight c6. He took on d5. Pawn takes on d5. And here white played bishop to e2. I think this, this move is slightly passive. I would say bishop to b5 looks much more natural. Uh, bishop e2, knight f6, castle, bishop to e7, bishop g5, castle, now white took on c5. So to be honest, white white's position looks pretty good. Because black cannot capture on c5 immediately. Um, because bishop takes f6, and then if the queen takes back, then we're losing, or anybody takes the, 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 the bishop, then we are losing the d5 pawn. So black had to play bishop e6 first. Knight to d4, bishop takes c5, knight uh, takes on e6. This, this move is probably not one of the best in the, in the game because really a white advantage is about this isolated pawn and this nice knight. Uh, we do get two bishops, but on the other hand, black gets the support of his pawns in the center. Um, bishop g4, queen d6, bishop h3, rook a8, queen d2, and now bishop to b4. Amazingly, 
just just four or five uh, moves ago I would choose white but here I would actually start choosing black suddenly all of black's pieces are very well positioned there's harmony between the pieces in addition white just took gave his uh, his bishop probably he was scared of knight e4 rook a to d1 queen to c5 getting the queen out of this d file and putting some extra pressure on c3 queen e2 take take queen takes so black won a pawn but white has actually a way to regain it but the rook takes on d5 <laughs> so the both players are still fighting knight d4 queen h5 rook e to e f8 rook e5 and now black starts arranging his pieces for the final move so he starts with rook to h6 and surprisingly white he played a very logical move queen to g5 which uh, led to the to the to the loss to his loss because now the combination is rook takes on the h3 but this was not the final move now he cannot take the, the rook right because if he takes the rook on h3 then just knight f3 forking the king and the queen so white played this move rook to c5 trying to counter attack so think about this position uh, what is the blacks best move so hopefully you guys found the correct move uh, this move um, as I said is called the shovel of gold after which um, Marshall got uh, got comp compensated for his beauty so what do you guys you guys know the move I, I know it I, I remember correctly yeah what it is queen to f3 close Yes, so the correct move is queen to g3. Uh, sometimes chess is just beautiful. So the queen is attacked three times, but no piece can take it. Because if it takes the h pawn, then it's just made in one move, knight to e2. If they take with the f pawn, then it's going to be made in two moves, a back rank mate. Now, if they take with a queen, it's still going to be a mate, but just um, going to take a bit longer. King knight e2 check, king h1, knight takes. King G1. Now, actually, this one is not a mate. But now he has to take, take on F, F1. And the knight can, is coming out to D2, keeping an extra piece. So, this was our second most beautiful. Uh, yeah, it had to be pretty good to see Queen to G3. Yes. Well, uh, the next game is actually going to be a recent game, which you all know. 
I'm not going, going to tell you yet who is going to play it, so let's see if somebody can recognize it. You probably all uh, saw the game. You know the players for sure. Uh, you probably all were watching the game. Let's see. E4, C5, Knight to F3, D6, D4, Pawn takes D4, Knight takes D4, Knight F6. So black is trying to play the, the knight dwarf. Here the regular move is knight c3, but uh, because it was a rapid game, why decided to play f3? Oh, yes. Yeah, Very good. <laughs> so this is the last game of the uh, last world championship in 2016. Uh, Magnus Carlsen against Sergei Karyakin, the 16th game. So let's see what happened. E5, Knight to B3, Bishop E7, C4. I like this move playing against the d5, c4, a5, aiming at a4, taking out the knight, bishop e3, a4, knight c1, hmm, mysterious move with the knight, let's see what the knight went after, castle, Knight c3, queen a5. Now the bishop might go to d7, but he might go to e6. So black doesn't really know yet where he wants to put the bishop. Okay, here was queen d2 first. Knight a6, bishop e2. Knight c5, castle, now bishop d7, now rook to b1, rook f to c8, b4, brave move, ampassant, pawn takes, now the threat of, of b4 is too strong, so black had to retreat and regroup with his pieces. Knight to d3. So basically white is um, keeping his edge, his positional edge. Knight to e6. Knight to b4, we have a very, very nice outpost here on d5. Once we get there, black is going to suffer. Knight b4, bishop c6, that makes more sense. Right, because now if knight d5, is, we're going to take twice with the bishop. And if the knight takes, then knight takes. So we don't want to uh, give uh, this opportunity for black, so I just played rook f to d1. See, even, even Carlsen is uh, you know, watching my videos probably and following <laughs> the principles. Develop all your pieces first. h5, bishop to f1. Very nice waiting move. It doesn't really do much, but just in case, covering the king, um, it's also the a rapid game, so uh, it's good to give the, the, the opponent some, some time to think, 
waste his time. H4. So the idea is that now black wants to play h3 and trying to weaken the white king's position. Queen to f2. Knight to d7. g3. Let's see what was the idea. The idea is that after black played the rook to a3, um, Magnus spotted that the bishop on f1 is not positioned so well behind the pawns, so he transposed the bishop to h3. Rook c to a8, knight c2. Rook a6. Exactly, so the knights are very powerful here. Black is going to have nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> Knight to b4, rook to a5. Knight c2, almost looks like a draw offer. But uh, I guess. Uh, Kariakin felt very uh, confident. He did not play rook a6, he played b6. Rook d2. Queen c7. Rook b to d1. Piling up on b5 again. Exactly. Well, black is preparing for it. Bishop f8. He's retreating all these pieces, saying, okay, if you come to d5, at least I'm not going to get attacked over here. And now, Carlson just grabbed this pawn on h4. Rook to d3. Because after knight f4, he took, pawn takes, bishop takes on d7. Queen takes on d7, and guess who is back? The knight on b4. <laughs> Great examples how how knights sometimes actually can be better than the bishops, right? Because usually we say that the bishops are better than the knights, but not in this case. Not when we have such powerful outposts, and especially again we are going to play against this bishop on on a fate. But this bishop on c6 is not so bad. Rook a3. Obviously, Kariakin is trying to um, get some counter play from the queen side. But we exchange one knight. We exchange uh, the c6 knight. And now this knight comes to b5. Obviously, we have some option where to put the knight. The idea of knight uh, going to b5 is that after Kariakin took on b3, knight came to d4, forking. On the other hand, if you don't take on b3, you're probably going to lose the d6 pawn at some point. So queen to c4, at least he got two pawns for, for, the, for the rook. But still, this bishop. Um, is not so good. Actually, if it was black to move here, D5. yes, that's correct. Black would probably play d5. Sometimes we want to sacrifice a pawn just to develop a, a stronger pieces. So Carlson played queen e2, bishop e7, king g2. Queen e6, h5. Rook a3 is still not so easy. I would actually I would say that um, right now maybe it's even easier for black to play because it looks like black is, is more active, our, our king is more exposed. But that's going to change <laughs> very, very fast because white played rook to d3. 
rook to a7. Oops, I'm sorry. Rook to a2 first. Rook to d2. Rook to a3, rook to d3. Now rook to a7. Rook to d5. Rook c7. So we see lots of rook maneuvering. Queen d2. Now after this move, probably white is already eyeing the d6 pawn, some sacrifices. Maybe queen takes f4. Queen f6. Rook f5. I like the fact that white is basically playing on all the white squares. Everything is on white. <laughs> like checkers. Queen h4. Now we need to try to get rid of this rook on c7. So Carlson played rook c1, rook a7, queen takes f4, check, king h1, the only move, otherwise we are getting mated. And now black played queen to f2. Almost looks like we are losing the game because almost we don't have any um, defense. Well, we can play rook to g1, for example. But that's so. Here, Carlson find a very beautiful ending for the game which uh, won him the world title again rook c8 check now if bishop covers there's probably a, a sacrifice and a mate so black just played king to h8 right doesn't look like uh, like there's something oh, yeah. going on looks like uh, rook h8 doesn't work rook takes f7 actually we black is the one looks like that he is winning, right? But a really genius move, which was queen to h6, queen to h6 check. I was watching this game and then it hit my mouth. Yes. Usually, usually when you see such such moves on the chessboard and you see that there's a result, usually you're like, wait a second, that's probably like this is not correct. Yeah. And it's probably like a, they, they agreed to a draw or something. But in this case, uh, yes, this was the last one because the queen takes, then rook h8, checkmate. And if the pawn takes, then rook takes f7. I was at the club watching it when that hit. I just went. A very, very nice finish for, for Magnus, um, for, his, for his World Championship title. Now, we are going to look at um, one of the, another World Champion, uh, which was uh, Jose Raul Capablanca. Um, this game was played in 1914 between Berenstein uh, White and Capablanca was playing Black. Was played in Moscow. Now Cap Capas Capablanca's uh, last move is one of the most famous uh, chess uh, gay chess moves in the history of chess. So let's see. D4 d5 c4 e6 we have a, a queen's gambit decline on the board it was very popular at that age bishop g5 castle e3 knight bd7 rook c1 b6 C takes d5, 
e takes d5, queen to a4, bishop b7. Basically, this is all theory. Bishop a6. Bishop takes a6. Queen takes a6. c5. Bishop takes f6. Knight takes f6. D takes c5. B takes c5. And castle. So let's see. So Bernstein, who is playing with white, his position is not bad. He created, for Capablanca, he created those uh, two weak pawns. Um, the position is probably pretty equal. But now black played Capablanca. Capa played queen to b6. Now if white exchanges the queen, then already we have a nice pawn chain, not so weak anymore. And a rook is going to be much more active. So why decide to retreat with queen to e2? c4, rook f to d1, rook f to d8, knight to d4. OK, so still looks like white is doing everything right. Block, blockaded the two pawns, put the two rooks in the correct spots. So let's see what went wrong. Bishop b4, b3, rook a to c8, b takes c4, d takes c4, rook c2, Maybe b b3 was the weakening move. Looks like some, some pieces are hanging right now. Bishop takes c3. Rook takes c3. Knight to d5. OK, so this pawn starts to get very, very dangerous. Rooks don't make good blockaders, do they? Exactly, yeah. You don't want to block the pawns of the rooks. Sometimes, sometimes you do. But when the knight, knight comes in to attack, uh, that's not, not a good idea. Now, why can't he take on c4? Yeah, simple fork. So white went back, rook c2, c3, Rook d to c1, rook to c5, knight to b3, rook to c6, knight to d4, rook to c7. So the real masters know how to repeat moves. Just a little bit of a change. Knight to b5, rook to c5. And now, white made a huge mistake. Instead of going back, he took the pawn on c3. Knight takes on c3. Rook takes on c3. Rook takes on c3. Rook takes on c3. So how does black win here? Think about it for a few seconds. Now, of course not queen b1. Because if queen b1, then white can play queen to f1. And rook to d1 does not work. Rook c8, exactly. So here, this does not work. But the most beautiful move is queen to b2. A nice distraction. So the queen is overloaded. She has to defend the first rank and the rook, and the rook but she can't. She can try. Yeah, the queen takes rook. 
but then we just take the rook and checkmate. This game uh, was played in 1923 bef between Samish and Nimzovic. Nimzovic is probably my favorite player of all time, really? especially from learning from him. Uh, the game got his name, the Immortal Zugzwan game. Now we know about the Immortal game, right? Which was the King's Gambit. But this is the called the Immortal Zugzwan game. And you will see why. So, again, we are playing black. Black rules today. <laughs> D4, knight of six, C4, E6, knight of three. Of course, Nimzovic playing black plays the Nimzovic. <laughs> <laughs> G3. Bishop b7, yes. I think bishop a6 is called the Nimzovich. Yeah, basically the b after b6 it's already the Nimzovich. But, but bishop a6 is another variation. I actually play bishop a6 sometimes, sometimes bishop b7. It's a matter of taste. But yes, both of the moves are very popular and both are played. Bishop g2. Bishop e7. Knight to c3, castle, castle, d5. So a very similar structure to the game that we saw before. Knight to e5, a very famous uh, maneuver where the knight comes to e5, it pins the d5 pawn, c6. Yeah, now white took on, on d5. Not sure that it's the, the best choice because I really like the, the, the fact that the bishop is turned off. So this really uh, gives, um, eases black's game. White played bishop to f4. a6. Rook c1. Well, now b5. So just getting some space. Now it's also dangerous sometimes because you might get uh, all those weaknesses on dark squares. But we, I don't see exactly how. Maybe the knight can jump to from d3 to c5. White played queen to b3. So, so far, so good. So far, so good. Knight c6. Knight takes e6. Bishop takes e6. H3. Well, that's a little bit of a strange move to me. Maybe this was the first mistake. Queen d7. King h2. Knight h5. Yeah, bishop d2. So the idea now, now we can't play f6 and e5 because we are going to weaken the, the d5 pawn. The idea is to play f5. Trying to play f4. Queen d1, b4. So suddenly, black is the one who gets the counter play. And I think, again, that happened because of those two moves. h3, king, h2 was really a waste of time. And then knight gets ready for the next game by going back to b1. Exactly. Knight, knight, the knight is going home <laughs> to sleep. Bishop b5, rook g1, bishop d6. The game for black is super easy. e4 f takes e4 Nimzovic is sacrificing a full piece to get active pieces uh, this rook is a beast 
queen g5, rook a to f8, king to h1, rook to f5, queen to e3, bishop to d3, so black is, is like a pyth python, right? He's uh, suffocating his opponent. Rook. Now the threat is rook e2, right? To capture the queen. Rook to e1. And now comes the final move in the game. I'm going to give you a few seconds to think about it. If rook takes g2, then rook takes g2. Right, then I go rook to, uh, f3, queen to g1. Now remember, I said this is called the immortal Zugzwang game. Think about it, how can white move in this position? So his last move was... <laughs> H6. That's like passing. Your turn. <laughs> exactly. Now, why why is the why is this move um, so strong? Because why there's no moves. I cannot move the bishop, right? Because I'm gonna lose this knight. This this is defended. If a he can try to play a3, but then I can even play a5. I can't move this rook because rook e2. I cannot move this rook. I cannot move the bishop. Um, basically, the threat is also rook to f3. So, uh, why does a piece up for a pawn? Just a regular position, and he resigns. Because this is going to be my last, uh, my best last move. And actually, I think it's actually going to be better than h6. I think it, this game is actually going to top the going to the top of my list. The new immortals are coming. Exactly. Okay. I'm going to do it quickly. Now this game, actually, I played again against Grandmaster um, Jude Grunfeld. And because I won this game, that was part of the tournament that gave me the, my final IM norm. So it was very important for me to win. Now I was white, and I played e4 e5 and I played bishop to c4 so the bishop's opening knight f6 d3 knight c6 knight c3 bishop e7 the idea with the bishop opening is that now it allows you to play this move f4 it's kind of like the playing the safe style of the king's gambit this king is now you still play f4 but you are sacrificing your pawn on f4 so pawn f4, d6, knight f3, castle, and now a very important move, f5, to block, a, to block all of his pieces. Knight a5, so he's trying to push with c6 and d5. I played bishop b3, knight takes, pawn takes, d5. Uh, Black is playing very well. He is trying to uh, explode the center because my king is still not castled. And therefore, I played queen to e2. This quiet move. Hoping that he is going to play d4. Well, he played the rook e8. And now, g4. That's why I call an attack. Now obviously to take on, on g4 is quite dangerous because you can lose your pawn d5, rook g1. So he played bishop to b4. Black still looks pretty good. Bishop d2. Now if you take on e4, I will take with the pawn probably. And the d file is going to be controlled by white. After a long cast, I'll put the rook on d1. So he played d4. Knight to d1. Bishop takes d2. Knight takes d2. Knight d7, 
to prevent g5. I played, well, if I push immediately, he can take and then queen h4. So I played knight f3 first. Knight of eight. Roll, roll the, the h pawn, right? Queen to d6. Queen to h2. A mysterious move, just to make sure attacking the pawn. On e5, preparing the, to enter with the queen on the h file. a5. Now, here I realized that actually a4 was a big threat, so I had to play queen d2 to go back. b6, knight f2. Now, um, what I like about this game is that I'm not re revealing where am I castling. Maybe to the king side, maybe to the queen side. Bishop d7, g5. A4. Now I have to take. Bishop takes. And I played king to e2. Very nice move connecting the rooks. Queen c5. B3. I have to defend a c2 pawn. Bishop c6. Knight to g4. Knight d7. H5. Rook takes a1, rook takes a1, rook a8, take, bishop takes on a8. This white squared bishop is kind of useless, isn't it? Yeah, it actually, the bishop is supposed to be good against the, the pawns, which are on white squares. But really, the pawn chain is very, very strong. So here, finally, I break through g6. It's time to mate. It's mating time. H takes g6. Now I could take with the f pawn, but I decided to take with the h pawn. F6. And now one of my, my best moves, king to d1. So defending the pawn on c2 and preparing to invade with my queen. But that's not the end. King f8, he's trying to escape. Queen to h2. Queen to e8. Now, if I play king, queen to h8, he's going to come to f8 and exchange queens, which I don't want to do. So I played queen to h7. Queen to f8. Knight to d2. Knight to c5. So how do we win this position? So let's go back here. So I played knight d2 just in case if he had, I was, uh, just in case black wants to sacrifice on e4. But how do we win this? How do we penetrate his position? It's not so easy. So from here, the game ended in two moves. Two moves. Two moves. Well, if I take on e5, he just takes. And f6, queen takes f6. So the hint for this position <coughs> is number one, uh, try to uh, focus on his weakness. Try to figure out what's his weakness and how can you attack it. Number two is how to improve your pieces. Which piece does not do much? Yes, <coughs> the knight on g4. Where would you like to put the knight? Well, if knight h6, then yeah, that's correct. I, I don't have to take it. And even if I do, I don't know if I'm winning. Well, yes, because then there's g7. But the problem is that knight h6 doesn't do much. So where is the weakness? Exactly. So I played knight f2. Now black thought that I'm just, I'm just going to repeat moves. So he played knight to a6. So he, he, I assume that he expected me to play knight g4 and, and to make a draw. But, no, oh, now I revealed my secret plan. Knight to h1. Yeah. And once he saw this move, he resigned. Wow. Yeah, that's 
So, can't stop it, can it? Yeah, because there is not enough time. There is not enough time. I think that instead of knight to a6, he could play, let's see, somehow to bring the knight here. So one, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four moves, and I'm doing one, two, three. I think it was in time. So if knight b7 instead, Knight e8. But he thought that I'm going to repeat moves, and after knight h1, well, so it resigned. yes, there is no way to defend the g7 pawn after the pawn falls, so does the game. Yeah, but my game finished with knight h1. I've never <laughs> seen any game in history which ended with the move yeah. knight h1. So this is the top of my list, and hopefully yours as well. Thank you so much.